Red Velvet is the name of a delicious cake, but it is also the name of a K-pop girl band that is extremely popular in Asia. The group's video Peekaboo reads as an occult elite 101 introductory course, and it ends with the death of a random guy for no apparent reason. The video is a perfect continuation of a disturbing trend seen across pop culture. The killing of men by female stars. Why is murder being celebrated in pop videos aimed at young people? One thing is for sure, the members of Red Velvet are not making the decisions involving their careers. And they're not directing any videos. Indeed, Red Velvet is signed with a notorious South Korean label, SM Entertainment, which has made the news several times for subjecting idols to slave contracts and mistreatment. SM Entertainment, one of the largest Korean music labels, has had a series of legal challenges to its contractual policies. In 2009, Former Super Junior member Han Jang claimed that the company forced him to do things he didn't want to do, under threat of fines if he disobeyed, and denied him sick leave when he developed gastritis and kidney problems. In 2012, XOM's leader, Chris, filed a lawsuit to get his contract annulled, due to the company's neglect of his opinion and health. The company has treated me like a machine part or as an object of control, rather than presenting a vision as an entertainer. While K-pop songs are often cute and upbeat, the behind the scenes of this world is extremely sinister. The entire K-pop system is based on the recruitment and exploitation of young talented individuals who are subjected to a military-style training program to turn them into slaves. According to one Singaporean woman who was picked out at a mass audition by a Korean talent scouting firm, trainees are expected to work 14-hour days to practice gym, dance, swimming, and singing. Breakfast is limited to low-fat biscuits, bananas, and lettuce. Thickened breast and salad are served for dinner, and no water is allowed after 7 p.m. to prevent bloatedness. Trainees are accompanied into the bathroom by a minder, and made to wear sunglasses at all times. One part of the process of becoming a K-pop is extensive plastic surgery, which is so common in the K-pop industry that an entire website exists documenting before and after shots of idle surgical procedures. And that is only the beginning. Those who go through this ordeal, especially women, are often turned into sex slaves or beta kittens. Female trainees are traded by brokers and are allegedly brought to bars and forced to engage in sexual work to get ahead, even if they are still minors. One ex-trainee claimed in an interview that the going rate for a meeting with a female trainee was $220, while very young trainees, or those signed with a prominent label, cost between $700 to $900. In 2010, Taiwanese singer Estrella Lin claimed that when she was a member of girl group 3EP Beauties, her agency bartered her body to potential investors. She said this is an open secret throughout the Korean entertainment industry, and actresses and singers are expected or forced to give sexual services in order to get advancement opportunities. In 2002, Jang Seok Woo, CEO of Open World Entertainment, was arrested for not only sexually abusing female trainees, but encouraging male idols in his employ to do the same. Aphrodisiac substances were administered to trainees, some of whom were underage. As usual, these stories are only the tip of the iceberg. As seen in my several other videos, the entire system is drenched in monarch programming and occult rituals. Brad Velvet's Peekaboo is another proof of the sad truth about K-pop. A group of beta kittens who dance to the occult elite's agenda and symbolism. This is a Red Velvet promo pic. Let's look at the video. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Why am I booing? Because the message behind the song is toxic. The video begins by setting an occult ritual vibe to the story. The girls of the group look up at a giant supermoon in the sky. 
In all occult circles, it is widely established that spells, rituals, and sacrifices yield the most potency during a full moon. For the rituals that require the most potent and powerful magic, the fullest phase of the moon is most appropriate. The full moon is the point when the moon emits all its light. It is the most potent time of the lunar cycle. Under the same moon is a pizza delivery boy who is about to be the subject of a ritual sacrifice. We then see the girls preparing for the blood sacrifice and they're dressed for the occasion. The girls are all dressed in red. As stated in previous videos, red is the color of blood sacrifice. For some reason, the girls are asleep, or drug. Before killing the guy, the girls feel the need to almost kill each other. Why? Because K-pop idols are interchangeable pawns. This girl is about to get her throat slit by her bandmate. Why? Because self-destruction is cool now. The girls then practice shooting arrows at this girl holding an apple. The same William Tell inspired scene, where an expert marksman shoots an apple placed on a child's head, is echoed in another K-pop video. Ladies code Kiss Kiss. In Kiss Kiss, singer Yoon Bi gets arrows shot at her. Bizarre fact, Yoon Bi died in a car accident after the release of that video. Other than nearly killing each other, the girls of Red Velvet also have a bizarre obsession with pizza. The girls place jewels on a pizza. But why? It seems that pizza actually means something else in this video. What does this all mean? The answer is in the signs. The girls do a prolonged one-eye sign, indicating that this video contains codes and symbols of the occult elite. They also do it outside, to make sure you understand that they're slaves of the elite. When the pizza delivery boy arrives, the ritual begins. The boy is placed on an altar, and is surrounded by candles. The girls circle around him in a ritualistic matter. The guy tries to run away and the girls find it very funny. The girls run past a trophy room, where are proudly displayed the shirts of past delivery boys who were sacrificed by the girls. RIP DELIVERY BOYS One of the girls takes the delivery boy's hand, making him believe that she will help him escape. Outside, the guy tries to call for help, but the phone doesn't work. On the booth, is a poster saying missing delivery boys with a picture of dozens of boys. Therefore, we are to understand, that Red Velvet has killed all of the boys on that poster. They're, like, serial killers. The boys are still considered missing, meaning that they've never been found, and Red Velvet are above suspicion. Even though they had to call pizza places, and give their address to get pizza delivered. It doesn't make sense. Any detective would have solved this case in about 35 seconds. Unless these rituals are protected by the elite, like they often are. So, did this pizza boy make it out alive? Nope. The video ends with a delivery boy shirt inside a display case. He was murdered by the girls whose song we're listening to. Let's go buy their album. The video ends with a murder. That's it. No twist, no lesson, no meaning. Just an innocent guy who got lured into the house of evil K-pop witches, and got murdered in a ritualistic fashion. Considering that most K-pop fans are very young, what the heck. The video is part of a wider and disturbing trend. The killing of men by female singers in music videos. Why are men being killed in videos? Here are some examples of the music industry celebrating female stars killing men. Taylor Swift's performance at the 2015 AMAs was about her killing a guy with a poisoned apple. We then see all of the men she previously killed in a dualistic hallway. Then, everybody in the crowd gave Swift a standing ovation. Then better have my money, Rihanna ties up a guy and stabs the crap out of him. The video ends with her all bloody. That's it. Now buy her album. In Fergie's creepy video Love is Blind, she kills four men. Here, she stabs a dude in the neck with a broken bottle. The reason? He was a slob. Killing him was indeed the only option in that situation. She then turns the guy's severed head and other men's limbs into a snazzy coat hanger. So cool. Some might rationalize these videos by claiming that they're about strong women and feminism. At the risk of stating the obvious, the violent murder of a person is not feminism, it is the violent murder of a person.
Red Velvet's peekaboo has no moral of the story. The girls ritualistically kill innocent men, they look fabulous while doing it, and, ultimately, they get away with it. All the while, they do all kinds of one-eye signs to highlight the fact that they're industry slaves, following the script that was given to them by their superiors. A-pop is 100% on par with the occult elite's agenda. The same debasing mind-corrupting messages that are pushed on young people who listen to Western pop are promoted in Asia as well. While feminism used to be about equality between the sexes, it is currently being steered towards anger, hatred, and the lust for the destruction. Is this the path to follow to become a better more spiritual and enlightened person? Of course not. It is a path towards the exact opposite. And that's what they want. They want a society filled with petulant immature irrational and self-centered children, who are entertained by playing peekaboo. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.